So we wanna thank you once again for coming today and joining us for this webinar on the five innovations that make light lifting commercially viable. With us today, we have Todd Mathewson, who's our senior sales engineer, and Chris Benio, who is the CEO of Lift and Store and Lift and Grow. We'll also have joining us Jason Green, who is with Grow Film, and we'll have Kyle from Garden Remedies, who's going to be talking to us about their experience. And he will be joining us later, but we'll have him on uh, as soon as he comes. So let's get started here. And before we do, let me just say that uh, we have our chat section that you can go to if you want to chat with other people or if you want to introduce yourself. And then we also have our Q&As. And you can go there and you can ask any questions that you want. And we will answer those at the end of the presentation. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover the history of light lifting. We're going to cover why lift lights. We will hear from the two panelists that I mentioned, Kyle and Jason. We'll talk about the five innovations. And then once done with that, we're actually gonna give you an idea of with using the five innovations, what your return on investment could be in buying some of our machines. We'll talk about our drying racks and give you a preview for a brand new giant rack we've just introduced. And then we'll be able to take your questions. So Chris, do you wanna talk a little bit about the history of light lifting? Absolutely. Uh, and first of all, thanks to everybody who, uh, on all the ships at sea who have joined us today. We really appreciate it. So our view of the world is that before uh, legalization, and I'm sure a lot of you have experienced from before legalization, we believe that virtually everyone moved lights. In their small grows, they, they took the time to make sure that everything was 100% perfect, that every light was exactly the place that it needed to be on top of every, every plant. And in fact, we, we've learned as we've gotten into this business that people were buying lift and store lifts from out of business sealer, sears and coal stores and putting them up in pole barns and using them to move lights. So we have a pretty good feeling that, that this was something that was done pretty normally and routinely. And then came legalization and the, and the pressure to scale the business, to figure out how to manage labor and uh, cost of goods and fertilization and uh, lighting and everything else that had to go into scaling from a couple hundred square feet to 25, 30, 50, 100,000 square feet. And during that scale up, labor becomes intense and it's likely that you ran out of time to do some of the things that you knew were right and that you always did. And this is, as we've talked to growers, this has been their experience. As they've tried to scale, they had to leave certain things behind. And one of the things you left behind was that the ability to move lights, partially because we believe there was no commercially available at scale method to do it. So the lighting companies jumped in and they said, look, we can solve this problem, just put more lights in. If you just put more lights in and create this canopy of, of bright lights and just pour dollars and energy into this, you can solve the problem of getting the right amount of energy to the plant and make up for any fact that, um, that, that might have been missing. And when the, if the plant grows too tall, you can always dim the lights back a little bit so that you don't burn the plant. So we'll solve the problem by applying too much light when the plant is small and then dialing back the light when the plant is a little bit bigger. Consultants also got on this bandwagon and said, you know what, it's not cost effective to move lights by hand. So we recommend you not do it and just put more lights in. And the question we ask growers is, well, that's wonderful if you can give the lighting bill to consultants or give the lighting bill to the guys who manufacture lights. And as we've talked with lighting manufacturers, we found a lot of sympathetic folks who believe what we believe that customers should pay for what they get. They should get the right amount of product. They should get the right amount of things in the right place at the right time. And so that's where we come from in this position that we're giving you back something that you didn't have because you couldn't have it at scale. So if that sounds like you, that's where we come in. Our mission is to provide cost-effective lighting systems, light moving systems to any grower in our universe. And that's any planet. We'll go anywhere. We'll ship these things to wherever it needs to be. We also believe that as regulations increase and you come under more scrutiny from OSHA and state regulatory bodies, that those folks are going to ask your folks not to be on ladders. This happened to our customers in Canada where Health Canada came in and said, it's unsafe for people to be on ladders. What you're doing on a ladder is unsafe. 
you've got two feet on the ground, two hands in the air, and the only safe way to use a ladder is with three points of contact. If you've ever painted a ceiling like I just did, you realize that it's impossible to do that with one hand unless um, you're kind of a crab guy. So as regulations come in, we're also here to help you ease those pieces and overall perform a labor saving operation with you uh, as well as giving you that ability to lovingly move your lights. Thank you, Chris. So uh, Todd, do you want to talk about why you lift lights, the science behind it? I do want to talk about that. Um, there is a reason why proximity of light to plant matters. Um, and we found that most of our growers are very familiar with this idea, this, this inverse square law, which basically states that when you double the distance between the light and the surface on which it is acting, you are getting one quarter of the light. Um, and so that matters because if your lights are way up in the air, like Chris already alluded to, you've got to either pour power to the lights uh, to get enough photons down to the plants, or you've got to move your lights. And so we've got this diagram in here, uh, which is from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory that we feel is a very good illustration of how this rule works. So I see here we've got Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So hey, we're sorry we missed you earlier, but we would love to, if you could tell us a little bit about your experience with Lift and Grow and, and what you've learned and what you're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're in Massachusetts and we have an 86,000 square foot facility. Um, our first build out, you know, we tried to build our own light hoist and uh, it, we ended up figuring something out, but it's definitely not to the quality that the Lift and Grow hoists are. Uh, we just finished building out three more 3,000 square foot rooms with, uh, I believe, 20 hoists in them. We are one of those companies that has multiple strains in a room. So each hoist moves independently. They're very smooth, very quiet, um, clean look to them too. Um, just a, a really in, uh, efficient uh, install process too. They came in and I think it was about a few days of room um, and they didn't really leave much behind. It was great, you know, very easy to use. Um, I love them. You know, we actually drop our lights up to three to four feet, depending on the strain. If we're running some longer running sativas and they need to be up high, we leave them up. Some of the auto flowers, stuff like that, will drop it way down to the ground. Um, they just work great. I can't say enough how much I like them. So Kyle, I've had a question I've wanted to ask you. You've obviously, because you built your own systems originally, you obviously understand the importance of moving lights. Yep. Have you noticed since you began moving lights, any, any changes in the plant? In the yeah, actually, we uh, had a 10% increase in yield around the board when we started lowering our lights. Um, it's a lot better just to stay in the optimal PPFD for the room. Um, depending on the strains, too, it's not always the same height per plant. So it's really nice having mobility like this, too. Wow, that's, that's quite, a, quite a statement. If we yeah. go back to our ROI calculator we were just talking about, that would be pretty low. So what do you see as your ROI on these machines? Oh, it's hard to say right now, but they're, they're definitely paying for themselves very quickly. Um, I'd say under a year, they all paid for themselves for sure. Not only in the labor, um, as they were saying before, clean lights, lowering, not having to climb up on ladders, but the safety too. We have actually had some issues with ours in the past and you get a little nervous when you have that much weight hanging from the ceiling um, and they're as safe as can be. You know, your light hoists are fantastic. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us awesome. today. So now I would like to introduce Jason Green, who's an account manager with GrowFilm. And he's going to talk about the benefits of, we talk about what his product is and then the benefits of using light moving systems. Jason, go ahead. Hello, George. Thank you very much for allowing me to be part of this webinar. Uh, I work with a company um, named GrowFilm. We're actually a company called Hilux, and we are the makers of Lumafilm and GrowFilm. We've been in the grow space for the past four years. We make a very thin product that can be um, put really intimately to the canopy of the plant. So it fits in very well with everything that Lift and Grow is doing. Um, we believe a lot of putting the light energy directly onto the plant is as effective as you can be. And what we've been able to do with our technology and combining with your technology is give the growers 
the ultimate control over their canopy and the amount of light energy that they're putting into their crop. We have seen multiple grows in multiple different crops have great success by using the inverse square tool and putting that light right on top of the canopy and then being able to decrease crop cycle by effectively driving the light into the plant as effectively as it needs to. And then once it's done, then they turn the lights off and let the plant rest. Now, Jason, I know that uh, some of the applications that we're working on with uh, Lift and Grow are the larger applications where they wanna move very long areas of, uh, of your lights. Can you tell us a little about that? Sure. We're working on a couple of different projects with you guys where we're moving 28 to 50 feet length of um, four foot wide by 28 foot canopy coverage all simultaneously and in multiple rows, which makes the capabilities of the grower much greater to be able to control all of the data points that they want to have a successful crop. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming today, Jason. Thank you. Okay, good. So Todd, do you wanna to continue on and talk about, uh, in talking to all the growers you've talked to, what, what are they seeing as the value proposition between our, behind our systems? Yeah, we, uh... We really obviously enjoy uh, kind of playing around with our value proposition. It's uh, much broader than we initially thought it would be. And we've had some surprises in here. Um, you know, obviously if you talk about things like getting the right light down into the plant, uh, where you wind up with that is uh, probably number eight and nine on our list, which used to be number one and two. Um, more yield and uh, increased potency. And that used to be our lead off of value proposition. And it still is there and still is important, but it's actually not the thing we've heard most from our uh, customers. Uh, we've heard a lot of different things from them and much more broad ranging. And so I'll just run through these quick with a few examples. Uh, decreased harvest cycle time. Uh, we recognize that you know, even cutting a day off your harvest cycle time can be a big deal over the long term, especially in a larger facility. Um, less labor moving lights and changing bulbs. And that idea of having to have people on ladders uh, dealing with problems up in the lighting rig versus bringing the lighting rig uh, down low where people can work on it. Uh, Chris already alluded to the idea of power savings, uh, putting your lights where they really can work optimally. Um, <clears throat> and also just, this is an interesting one to consider where an industry uh, is coming a little bit under scrutiny for our power usage. And this is at least one place where we can say we can save some power this way by having our lights in the optimal position. Uh, this fourth one is a really interesting one. This came directly from a grower who uh, currently is using a, a test row. So uh, we worked with him and uh, he purchased a machine from us to do a test row so that he would understand how this would work into his system in a much larger facility. He walked past this test row one day and noticed that to his eye, uh, his plants looked a little bit light stressed and he felt he needed to move those lights away from the plants. And he told me that in the past, he would have had to get a work crew together, uh, get guys on ladders and a couple hours to move these lights. And who knows if it would have happened that day, it would have depended on where there was available personnel. Uh, he was able to just walk over to a button and two seconds later, problem solved. He didn't have to think about it. He could come back the next day and see what was going on. So that solving light issues instantly is very powerful. Uh, process control integration really deals with the ability of our system to actually integrate fully with a process controller of your choice. Uh, and so this can take on a lot of forms. Uh, but basically our machine can communicate back to a process controller its position in space. And so it's actually able to provide that feedback and then to take instruction from the process controller or from you manually to be able to raise and lower your lights. Uh, number six, keep staff off ladders. Um, honestly, one joke that I quite often use as I'm talking to growers is, you know, I talk about that one guy that's been working for you for years 
he's dead reliable, he shows up every day to work, and yet he's kind of a klutz. And every time he gets on a ladder, everybody kind of gets nervous. Um, this way, we can put our staff, we don't have to put our staff in danger. Uh, we can have them do their best work without them being in dangerous situations. And it becomes part of a work enjoyment thing. Uh, they don't have to be up on ladders and in dangerous spots. We can actually let them enjoy their job. Uh, and then this last one, I'll cover number seven here, um, offset from light installation costs. Basically what we're talking about there is when it comes to the expense of the system, uh, there's an expense of hanging lights anyway in a grow room. And that expense uh, partially offsets the cost of our system. So uh, it's just something to take into consideration when you're actually uh, considering implementing one of our systems. Okay, Todd, thanks. <clears throat> So let's look at the five innovations. Yeah, and uh, thanks, George. So to Todd's point about the, the light installation thing, look at this picture here, right? This is Urban Remo in Canada. And he is lifting two rows of lights with a single machine. So when you think about light installation costs, he would have had to install two sets of, or two rows of lights, two sets of power, two pieces. With our machine, he's installed two rows with a single connection into a ceiling. So he affected some savings during his installation process by leveraging the width of the machine. And this is one of the things that we offer to growers is this mass customizable 10 foot unit that can show up in all kinds of different configurations. So for Shango, we've done pods. For Garden Remedies, who you're gonna hear from later, we did 56 foot long single rows. For uh, the customer that you saw in the beginning, with that slide, we did uh, 32 foot double rows. We are now doing triple and quadruple rows as well. And we'll show you some pricing pieces of how that leverages our machine. But the key is that we start with your business process. And from that business process, we craft our Legos into a solution that works for your grow. Thanks, Chris. Let's, let's take a look at Urban Remo's uh, installation here, just so you get an idea of what it looks like setting it up. Oops. Or Todd. So innovation number two is increased weight capacity. And let's uh, hear from Todd here, tell us about the new innovation. Welcome to the Lift and Grow R&D Dungeon. This is where we get sent when we have nervous energy and we need to go create cool stuff. Uh, what you're looking at here is our prototype of a heavier lift machine than we've previously done. Uh, this machine lifts 600 pounds versus we used to lift around 350. Uh, it's got a new motor, it's got torque assist installed, and so what that does is uh, that lets us lift greater weights which we can multiply over greater areas. So we've just done this with a bunch of tubing, but uh, imagine if this were your grow lights and we can spread this over up to a thousand square feet. All right. Okay, let's move on with innovation number three, additional length. Yeah, so uh, when we first invented this machine, we had expectations about what it would be able to do. And uh, working with Todd and working with growers, we keep shattering those expectations. We have now created uh, single run machines that are over 110 feet long. And we know that we can lift uh, multiple rows and do machines that lift as much as 150 linear feet of, of lights. And what this does is it leverages the power of our machine. The most expensive part for us is the motor and control box, clearly. And when we leverage those across greater and greater areas, we're able to lower the price to you. So it makes it a much more cost-effective uh, prospect the, the bigger the area that we're managing the lift. I'll say that, but at the same time, I'll tell you that we have craft growers buying 16 and 24 foot machines from us all the time because they fully understand the time that it saves them in their particular grow. 
So back to the Lego idea, we've got this concept that small or large, we've got a, the ability to craft a system for you. This is an 80 foot long machine inside a greenhouse outside San Diego. And this is gonna be our first fully automated operation. Our machines are gonna tie into a process control system using uh, light meters for PPFD, transducers to measure the height between the lights and the canopy. All of that's going to tie into a system where any one of the 150 individual machines can be operated from a cell phone. So back to Todd's example of the grower in Colorado who can walk through the grow and say that machine number 72 needs to move up an inch and be able to boop, boop, boop and move 80 feet of lights up one inch to be able to optimize what's happening in the facility. We're really excited about this, as well as the fact that the grower is convinced that between summer and winter, he loses 35% of his production, and he believes that by moving lights, he's going to be able to make up that gap. Okay, innovation number four. And to follow on, so we talked about a 150-foot long machine that could be three 50-foot rows. And what you see here again is you've got two, two machines lifting four rows of lights. And so that worked for this grower's process. It was something he was able to grow two rows of one strain, two rows of another strain. He got fingertip control of those lights at a really uh, incremental cost over, over where he was before. All right, so now we add all those together. So one thing I just wanna make really clear, um, right at this point, when we start working with a potential client, um, process has to drive everything. So there's the, there's the physical aspects of your building um, and then there's your process. How are you going to function in that building? So what we wanted to illustrate here uh, is that depending on your process or if your process can be flexible as Chris already alluded to, uh, we can really leverage and get really cost effective with these machines. So we did fairly common example of six 40 foot rows in a, uh, in a space. Um, if your process dictates that you need to have each row lifting individually, so like a craft grower or something, you're going to have one strain per row. Uh, those machines for all six machines would be $24,835. That's fairly big room, fairly big canopy. And so your, uh, your dollars per square foot of canopy are actually not too high, but they're up there a little bit, but your process is driving that. Uh, in our second scenario, there are two rows per machine. So we'd be putting three machines into that row. The room cost now has actually come down to $15,255. So you can see where we've already dropped uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $909,000 $500 out of that room cost uh, just by lifting a couple rows at a time. Uh, and then our third solution where we put two machines in the room, each machine is lifting three rows, the room cost gets all the way down to $11,906. So you can see the power of leveraging these machines over large spaces. Uh, we actually just recently did a proposal for a customer who had, uh, it, was a, it was a greenhouse grow we were actually able to lift about 1,500 square feet of canopy on a single lift in his case. That was about 44 grow lights. And so one point I want to make around this, um, you'll quite often hear us talk about that we're agnostic when it comes to lighting, and we are. Uh, but if we have a client who's driving towards uh, increasing the, uh, the cost effectiveness of the machines, um, we have a weight limit to work with. And so we will sometimes explore that a little bit. Maybe we can get the weight of the lights down uh, and so that we can cover more area. Uh, in the case of an LED light, a great example of that conversation would be, uh, can we remote mount your drivers would be a great example. They don't necessarily have to change lights, just get a light with a remotable driver. So a lot of ways that this can go, but hopefully this illustrates the, the uh, power of multiplying the machine over area. Thanks, Don. So now let's look at uh, an example from our ROI calculator. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got the uh, URL for finding that. And uh, we really, really suggest that you do it. You can, you can create a, your own ROI using whatever statistics you want in less than five minutes. It's all based on sliders, very, very user-friendly. 
But in this example here, we took the, the different uh, statistics that we had talked about with the uh, size of the machine and how many machines you're going to have. And we used an example where we figured out your energy savings by moving the lights closer could be $3,165. Your labor savings and avoided costs, and we're really just talking about $300 a month of labor savings, is $3,600 a year. And the increase in revenue per room using a 2% factor, a 2% increase in your yield came out to a yearly savings of 19,000. In other words, in the total then, you get $26,000 of savings per year. With six machines, you've got a return on investment of 11 months with the three machine example of seven months and with the two machine example of only five months. And again, we strongly suggest you go and do this uh, on your own and see what it is for you. Now I wanna move on just a little bit to the drying racks, the overhead drying racks. And you can see here, we've got two different examples of the drying racks. The first one is our three-in-one drying racks. And this is an example of how it's used with hangers. And you can carry uh, between 350 and 500 pound capacity with these hanging racks. The three flatbed racks on the right, think of them each as eight by four, or like a piece of plywood. They can each take up to 90 pounds of wet cuttings. And we, you can get these from one flatbed to five flatbeds. So if you've got a tall ceiling, you could put a, quite a few of these into your room. I just wanna, you know, we've got some customers out there that just love it. And one of our favorite quotes is down at the bottom where he says, hanging 26 feet in the air without any ladders or lifts was a dream and it saved us a good chunk of time. So coming soon, and maybe Chris, you wanna talk about this new liftable rolling rack. Yeah, absolutely. So our goal here, and, and the, all of these drying racks have been developed by customers. So uh, the one on the left on that last picture, that customer took our lift and started customizing it with our help and made it do things that we didn't know it could do, which is always just an extraordinary outcome. Same thing with the uh, flatbed drying rack that was designed by a grower here in Minnesota, who this was her dream of how she saw drying racks work. And so we developed the product that made her dream come true, which was a collapsible rack that is storable in the ceiling, but also leveraged their 20 foot ceiling and made uh, their ability to double production possible without making their facility any bigger. And that's really, you know, at the end of the day, what the lift and store side of our business uh, bring, brings to the party. And that goes to here. The, we developed the, the rack you see here for a university customer who was gonna store clothing on this rack. And what you find about most mobile racks that roll is that they are held together by gravity. They're not designed. You try to pick them up and they fall apart. So we've created a rolling rack that is designed to be picked up with a quick, quick release mechanism up at the top so for those of you who harvest in place, you can harvest in place, roll this through your doorway, which we work with you to decide what that doorway width is, roll it into your dry room, connect it to a lift, raise it overhead, and then store a second one underneath. So we give you the ability to double the dry room capacity overnight. And it's a really, really cool idea. We're very excited about it. We've got the first prototype, obviously, that I'm standing next to right there. And we're working on ones that fit through single doors, double doors, garage doors, working through what the different use cases are right now. So if this is something that interests you, we'd love to hear from you because we're in design right now and uh, very excited about where this leads. Thanks, Chris. So here's a couple other things if you go to our website that you might see. One is we've just added a gallery. So you can go and you can see photos of all kinds of different installations with all the different products that we have. Another thing we have is we have a white paper for you. And the white paper, this one, protecting electrical ROI, starts getting into the different ways that you can save with the lift and grow systems, including electricity. And then this other white paper, white paper is about labor and safety in the workplace. And so this one really looks at what 
are some of the biggest dangers you have? What is the advantage of keeping people off ladders? And also what are the cost savings of keeping people off of ladders? So with that, we'd like to turn it over to your questions here. And I'm wondering guys, do we have some questions from people that we'd like to address? Yes, we have a question here, uh, wondering if these machines are owner installable. And the answer to that question is absolutely. In fact, most of our standard machines uh, are installed by the owners um, or by their contractor. Uh, they go up very easily and uh, we've actually designed them to be that way. Okay, any other questions? We do have another question here, uh, wondering what the power requirements are. Uh, our machines actually run off of standard 110 volt house power. So they're literally plug and play. So there's no uh, major planning that needs to be done for that. We generally recommend that they be put on a 15 amp circuit, but they're not running all the time. Uh, they're running usually a few seconds a day. And so their power requirements are quite low. Okay, any others? Okay, well, thank you very much for attending today and you will be receiving a copy of this recording coming up very soon. So thanks again, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.